So I'm at the Central Kentucky Regional Airport and there are, by my count, 14 aircraft on the ground. It's a beautiful day here. The winds are calm, uh, if not light and simply a little variable. Now there are a number of reasons why these aircraft are sitting on the ground. The biggest one is weather. A vast majority of flight training is done in clear skies with light winds. Especially in Kentucky, this limitation grounds many students. Take a look at this recent schedule of another sunny, calm day. Wednesday, October 21st of 2020. Skies clear, high of 75, light winds out of the south. Here we see that three aircraft were down for maintenance all day. Compare that to a day from 2019. Wednesday, October 23rd. Skies clear, temperature was a high of 64 with light winds out of the south southwest. At just a quick glance, it's obvious that there are some big changes here. Overall, flying was up at least 50%. Both days had three planes down for maintenance. And both days also saw some airplanes with fairly high utilization rates. But the biggest difference is, in 2019, we saw an entire airplane, fully mission capable, not be used all day. Many play airplanes in 2019 sat around with big gaps in their scheduling. My goal is to put real numbers to this visualization. The pictures here are meaningful and quite striking, but breaking down the comp comparison year over year on a weekly basis will give the best idea. Another unavoidable reason why airplanes don't fly is because of maintenance. Scheduled maintenance at a flight program like this happens at regular intervals. Once every year, once every 100 hours, once every 50 hours. Some of these inspections are regulatory, meaning that lack of completing them not only jeopardizes safety of operations, but the validity of the program itself. These scheduled maintenance events don't even take into account any discrepancies that get logged within an airplane. These discrepancies can be something like a door latch not working quite right or a seat belt not working quite right. The biggest, most controllable reason that aircraft utilization might be down is due to scheduling. Because aircraft are the most expensive, tangible asset that a flight training program has, the interest needs to be in maintaining control over these assets. In 2015, Purdue University found inefficiencies in their flight block scheduling. Aircraft were scheduled for two hour blocks for a one and a half hour flight event. This 30 minute buffer allowed for a pre-brief and a post-brief between the instructor and the student. While this arrangement best allows for utilization of instructor's time, instructor's time does not cost as much as an aircraft. Additionally, over the course of a day, these half hour blocks add up to another flight training event for another student. Three two hour blocks could be turned into four 1.5 hour blocks. Now, one aspect that Purdue University left out in their study was the number of available instructor hours. Certified flight instructors are limited by law in the amount of hours that they can instruct in one day. From a regulatory basis, an instructor can only fly eight instruction hours in one 24-hour period. Within this 24-hour period, instructors are further limited by schedule and availability. At EKU, only 17 of our 28 flight instructors do not have limited availability, which I'm defining as less than five days per week. Now this kind of points to a bigger issue where this is an unequivocal truth across flight training. Flight instruction is a mean to an end for most people, a way to build hours to be able to be hireable by an airline. The problem though is that instruction in and of itself is not enough to live off of. For those who have bills to pay, sometimes it requires them taking another job uh, to pay the bills. So taking that into account, my research intends not to just determine our utilization rates at Eastern and, and why they are the way they are and, and what we can do to make them better, but to also compare that to the number of instruction hours available. Because if you have aircraft available that are being managed and scheduled well, it doesn't matter if there aren't enough flight instructor hours to take those students out for their training events. The benefits of good aircraft utilization seem pretty simple, right? You have these fixed costs of, of maintaining aircraft. Um, 
And if you are able to put more students in an aircraft per day, you're able to displace the fixed cost amongst all students. When I was initially beginning to think about this research, I, I thought, as a paying student, that the best use of that savings would be to pass on the savings to the students in the program. My thinking behind this was that keeping flight fees as low as possible for as long as possible could be used as a recruiting tool for more students. But then I found this study on the price of higher education. Researchers from Cornell University and the University of Maryland, Baltimore, found the elasticity rate for higher education. Now, elasticity is the relationship between um, price and demand. So, you know, if, if the price of this product goes up X amount, what do we expect to see in terms of lessened demand? This research was conducted in 2006. And what they effectively found was that for every $100 of increase in tuition and fees, there was a decreased enrollment of about 0.25%. Now, to put this into real numbers, um, they, they applied it to the average four-year university and college. What they found is that if the average university or four-year college in our country um, increases tuition and fees by 5%, which is the federal cap, on the increase, then there was an in de decreased enrollment of about 51 students. Now the, the loss of income from these 51 students that don't enroll was about $225,000. But the increase in revenue from all the other students who were still there, $2.24 million. I recognize in reading that study that that is not news to the people who run higher education. They very much understand the relative inelasticity of price and enrollment. And in seeing that, in seeing how, how inelastic this relationship is and how much potential increased income there is, I realized that any savings through better aircraft utilization need not be passed on to the students because they will be there anyway. Increased savings need to be put into further infrastructure for the program whether that's marketing or um, acquiring new aircraft or putting money into staff and CFIs, that ultimately is what will grow this program. So in increasing aircraft utilization, the overall efficiency of the program is increased. The researchers at Purdue came up with this very simple equation to determine the number of weekly available aircraft hours. It's a function of how many aircraft there are, how many hours are in the day, which is based on what time of year it is, on the number of days in the week. So taking that number as the baseline of the, the total weekly available hours, they look day by day, week by week, in at how many aircraft were actually used. And then further, they break down how many cancellations were due to weather, how many cancellations were due to maintenance, and cancellations for other reasons. So using, using those metrics, we can determine the aircraft utilization as a percentage of our weekly available aircraft hours. To take that further, in my research, I intend to look at the weekly available instructor hours, which again, from a regulatory basis, is determined by those eight hours of available instruction flying. And it's also a function of the number of instructors available and the number the average number of days that instructors have available. So then taking these two numbers, the number of weekly available aircraft hours compared to the number of weekly billable instructor hours, we can see not only if there are deficiencies in aircraft scheduling, but deficiencies in these assets that are available. Because this aircraft time and these instructor hours are assets that if not fully utilized, decrease the overall efficiency of this program. So my goal with this information is to lay it out in a report that basically says, you know, we have X amount of available aircraft hours, X amount of available instructor hours. Look at and study the deficiencies, the why, and then take this information and give proposals for the future. Do we need to cap enrollment based on the assets that we have available? Um, 
or can we increase enrollment based on the assets that we have available? Further, do we have enough assets? Um, you know, are there enough instru instructors with open availability? Is there enough staff to manage the scheduling? These ultimately are the pressing issues that I, that I intend to find, dissect, study, and give recommendations on for my thesis.